to ask you some questions and we'll read a little bit more, a little bit more. Because this thing that you're looking at is not just an obstacle to traffic. It's not just a different kind of lifestyle. But it represents for the biblical writers a thing that is at the doorway of Jerusalem. Remember just through the Mount of Olives when we were here, right? Something that is pressing Jerusalem. Something that, that represents earlier experiences and something that for foundational experiences and something that represents a threat to the people nestled in that basin up above. So let me start this way. Maybe get a little bit comfortable on your seat. I don't mind if you sit on the ground um, as you can. And I want to start with a portion of Psalm 139. A portion of Psalm 139. The psalmist is going to use language that you're looking at and language of what's further down as realities that become images of you. All right? Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You understand my thoughts from afar. You discern my pathway and my lying down are intimately acquainted with all of my ways. Even before there's a word on my tongue, Lord, you know it all. You have enclosed me behind and before. You laid your hands on me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It's too high. I can't figure it out. So where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I descend to the heavens, to the sky, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, that's deep, you are there. If I take the wings of the dawn, off the cliff lines down here are the big birds, the nesher, the six-foot wingspan birds that launch themselves up and catch the currents rising, yeah? If I dwell in the remote, most remote part of the sea. Now the psalmist didn't know that the deepest place on the planet is just down here and the deepest body of water on the planet is down here and it goes down as deep underwater as Jerusalem is above it. All right, He didn't know that. But it sure fits. The most remote part of the sea, even there your hand will lead me and lay hold of me. If I say darkness will overwhelm me. I mean, imagine being out here trying to work your way up to Jerusalem. You got caught in the nighttime. All kinds of critters come out, let alone the locals. Pitch black. It happens to be a day, a night when the moon is really thin. You see a billion stars, but they don't give that much light. And you're walking on a ridge this narrow, and you're not quite sure to turn left or right in the dark. Surely darkness will overwhelm me. The light around me will be like nighttime. But no, like you, night is bright as day. Four. Now he's going to turn it to you. You formed my inward parts. You wove me together in my mother's womb. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made secretly, skillfully wrought in the depths of the earth. Your mother's womb is compared to the depths of the earth where God is working and molding and shaping and then bringing life out of. Yeah? Your eyes saw my unformed substance. It was written down all the days ordained, even before there were any of them. And the, the beginning of your life, mysteriously and wonderfully made, created out of something that you have no power over, right? Mm -hmm. And likened somehow to life erupting, emerging out of this wilderness 
and blooming and blossoming and growing and providing. Search me, O God, know my heart, try my anxious thoughts. See if there is anything offensive in me and lead me to the everlasting way. Yeah, the right way. So it's a sound that kind of plays with the landscape and you as well. So let me ask you, when you look at Bible, 